NASA has criticised China over its failure to meet responsible standards when it comes to its space program after debris from an out-of-control rocket plummeted into the Indian Ocean. Remains of the 30-metre-long rocket have re-entered the Earth's atmosphere at high speed, landing just west of the Maldives. China has had lost control over the long march after it launched part of a new space station into orbit on the 29th of April. Joining me live now is Asia Correspondent. Adrian Brown, live from Hong Kong. Adrian, good, good to see you this morning once again. It's a reminder that China is expanding its space program. What's its intention? Well, President Xi Jinping is insistent that China becomes a major space power within the next few decades. And for that reason, China is pouring billions of dollars into its space program. And it has to be said, Laura, that China has come a long way very quickly with its space program. In the last decade alone, it sent probes to the moon, uh, to Mars, and now it's in the midst of constructing its first space station that will comprise, you know, all Chinese components. The rocket that was launched uh, almost two weeks ago was carrying a key module for that new space station that China is building in space. Now, the reason why China is having to do this is that it's been barred by the United States from the International Space Station that comprises other countries who've fallen out with China on a number of issues. So what is happening is that the Cold War politics on Earth have also sped uh, to, to space. Indeed. Well, China is pursuing a lot of lines of diplomacy, you might say, at the moment, with its vaccine uh, diplomacy, uh, some call it debt diplomacy, in our part of the world as well. I guess space is seen as a bit of a new frontier. Would you agree? Yeah, and actually, Laura, it's worth pointing out that in the past two weeks or so, China has notched up what it would see as some important developments to back up its credentials, not just in the area of vaccines, but also in the area of its space program. Because last week, the World Health Organization approved the Sinopharm vaccine, which has, as we know, a pretty low efficacy rate compared to vaccines produced in the United States and Europe. So that was a boost for China. And the fact that its mission, its latest space mission, passed off so successfully in their eyes, in spite of it creating an anxious week for the world, as we all wondered where this rocket was going to land, I think China's feeling pretty good right now. And remember, you know, in the next 18 months, it's going to be launching at least 10 more rockets in support of that space program. So a lot happening. I was speaking to one uh, Chinese official actually last week who said that ultimately their aim is to develop what they call dark space. That's the sort of space that, you know, Captain Kirk and Dr. Spock used to venture into <laughs> in Star Trek. That's what China has in mind. It, it is what they call dark space. And that raises, of course, the, the real concern that over the next few decades, you're going to see the growing militarization of space because it's not just Russia and the United States and China now sending rockets up into space, but also India and Japan are doing the same thing. So there's a real space race on at the moment involving a number of countries in this region. Yeah, the reality, as they say, is often a little stranger than fiction. So, uh, yes, very Star trek -y indeed. But I find it really interesting that China is kind of using the US template when it comes to space. And in many other areas, in order to be, you know, the ultimate aim is to be the most influential and biggest economy uh, on Earth. But it's using the US template and trying to better them at every, every angle, isn't it? Yeah, one of the things that China perhaps suffers from, and it's one thing I noticed when I lived there, is sort of innovation. The, the accusation against China has always been that it copies what other countries does, particularly in the area of technology, which, you know, a num number of countries like the United States says that China simply steals that technology through cyber theft. But I think President Xi Jinping wants to try to change that. I think he, he is aware that China has fallen out with a number of countries around the world, including, of course, Australia, that rivalry with the United States and Europe is increasing. And China, of course, has been dependent on technology from those countries, particularly things like semiconductors. So what Xi Jinping wants to do is to ensure that China becomes more and more self-sufficient 
in those bits of technology on which it's reliant from the outside world. And it's not just, you know, technology. It wants to make mm. sure that China is more reliant and, you know, can produce more of its own wine, can produce more of its own seafood, so it doesn't have to depend on other countries as we enter into what many say is a deepening Cold War with China. Indeed, and we've felt that and seen that here in Australia, but the rhetoric hasn't really always matched what China is actually doing. You just have to look at the iron ore price. I mean, today it's at a, a new US dollar record, I think $230 a tonne. So whilst China is saying on all these other areas it's, it's pulling back and there's uh, trade sanctions on uh, timber, wine, barley, wheat, beef, it still can't resist our iron ore, can it? That's right. I mean, at the moment, China is not prepared to press the nuclear button and to stop imports of Australian iron ore. In the past, though, China has been prepared to, to cut off its nose to spite its face when it's fallen out with a country, but it can't afford to do that at the moment. Also, ditto, you know, a lot of Australian coking coal. They need that ore, they need that coal to make the steel that they need at the moment because that is very high quality steel. China is embarking on a massive infrastructure building program at the moment. So for the moment, it is dependent on Australian iron ore. But make no mistake, China is looking around the world for other sources, is looking at places like Brazil, mm. it's looking at places like Africa where there are large reserves of ore. But the problem is it's going to take years to get that ore out of the ground. So for the moment, they will stick with Australian ore. But believe me, when it suits them, they will find another supplier. Absolutely. But today on Budget Day, it's a very happy treasurer with those circumstances. Adrian Brown, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Laura.